goalkeeper was one of the two players that performed. A few players tried, but nothing worked or came of it. But it was just rubbish from everybody involved. The manager, the players, the substitutions, everybody involved today, bar two, I think, was crap. Um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just not good enough. This was a pivotal game for us. And we didn't even turn up. Such a huge game. Win, go six, increased chance of European. There's a lot on the line today. Didn't look like we could be bothered. Well, actually, that's a lie. The first seven minutes, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the first seven minutes today. The other 83, not so much. But about seven minutes, I thought we were good. I thought we were knocking the ball about well. We were getting the crosses in. Really good chance for Mikhail Antonio. So far, was a bit unlucky. He does everything right. Just good goalkeeping by Leno. Falls to Antonio, who just absolutely leathers it over the bar. But what I will say, when I said I thought two players played well, Mikhail Antonio was the other one. I don't think we utilised effective Antonio. Now, he got that wrong, but I thought he went on to have a decent game. That's it. But should be doing a lot better with that one, Antonio. But it was promising seven minutes. And I thought, hello, looks like we're up for this. We might get the win. Two minutes later, pff, done. And I say pff, done because we've got 19 points from losing positions so far this season. We're at the top of the table alongside Man City, Spurs and Liverpool, I think. We're, that, 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 that's the four, I think, at the top of the penalty table for points recovered from losing positions. But I don't know, from, from Fulham's goal onwards, there was just nothing about us. When your team can't defend, you have not as much hope. When your team can't attack, you don't have that much hope. When your team can neither defend nor attack, there isn't really much to get too excited about. And I found myself thinking that for the duration of the game, bar the first seven minutes. But anyway, Fulham's goal, sloppy, sloppy play in the middle of the park, giving it away way too easily. Fulham break on us. Uh, it will be with a, a not a great ball over to um, Munez. Mavropanos decides to take it down, gets it all wrong. Falls to Pereira, who, unlike Antonio, stays calm, stays composed, rounds Fabianski, puts it into the back of net. Fantastic play by Andreas Pereira. But a very self-inflicted goal from West Ham, because that was the first time Fulham had really got out of their half. But from then until half-time, it was just the same thing, which was we got into Fulham's... We got into the final third pretty easily. There wasn't really much difficulties getting it from our defence to our midfield up to our wide players, one of which was Mikel Antonio all the time. But there was just nothing. There was no creativity. There was no invention. There was no plan. It was just a case of, oh, we've got it now. What do we do? And the answer was, I'm not sure. We'll just give it to you. We'll give it to you. And we just kept on passing it until we'd lose the ball and Fulham would break on us and nearly scored a second one. They'd be disappointed at half time to only be 1-0 up, I think. Pereira had a really good opportunity. It will be flash when why Munez had a couple of shots, which you'd expect Fabianski to say, but he saved both. The, the one from the header from the corner I thought was really good, actually, but the other one was a, a comfortable save. But Fulham were, were the better team, but I don't think they blew... So, it wasn't like I was watching Prime Man City against West Ham today. Let's get this right. They were in a decent Premier League side today, and that was that. But that's all they had to be in order for it to be comfortable. And they thoroughly deserved the three points today. I've got absolutely no complaints about the scoreline. We're not being mugged off or anything. Well, those West Ham fans who went to the game got mugged off, but not by the scoreline, just by the team performance and the team put out, etc., etc. 1-0 up Fulham. Anyway, um, it was one of them. I was just hoping, and it was just pure hope, that there was going to be a bit of a Wolves thing last week where we came out in the second half and we were a much better side and we went on to win the game. Nothing. We came out the second half and continued in the first half vein, which suggested that Moyes maybe felt we were just unlucky, that things weren't quite working, made no changes. Well, we should have been making changes. There was nothing in the first half. A few half chances with headers for Danny Ings and James Ward Prowse, but that was it, really. Second half, we just continued as we were, still creating nothing. Danny Ings still huffing and puffing up front. Mikhail Antonio was still coming out wide and getting involved, but with nothing to do. He would beat a man or two, get to the corner and cut it back. Paqueta was still giving the ball away. I have to be careful not to criticise him too much because I've got a row. Um, he eventually made the substitution. Suchek and Johnson came on, but it was just too little too late. And it was 2-0 fooling. Again, another break, another counter-attack. 
and another error from Lucas Paqueta. He's got the ball inside Fulham's half. This pass is on. Ben Johnson stood right next to him looking at him unmarked. And Paqueta thinks, no, do you know what? I'm going to take on four players myself. I don't need anybody else. Polini with a crunching tackle. I really, I like those tackles. They're a real crunching tackle. Full and break. Makes his way out to Awobi. Cuts it back to Pereira. Edson Alvarez is looking around. Doesn't, well, actually, I think he sees Pereira. He just decides that he's going to gamble on the cutback. Tap in. 2-0 Fulham. Deserved 2-0 Fulham. Um, from then on, again, nothing from us. It was absolutely pathetic. There was no reaction, no change in system, no change in tactics. We just kept on doing the same thing. Fulham were comfortable for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, 70 minutes. And we just kept doing the same thing. We'll just pass it around. And again, it was easy to get up to and outside Fulham's 18-yarder. But once we were there... There was just nothing. There was no creativity whatsoever. And what the one bit Paquetta did do, good pass to Ings. Not very confident, tries to take on his right foot, goes out for a corner. Paquetta with the header, really good save from Leno. And it just dies. Any bit of momentum we got today was in small, small periods. And it was just gone just like that. It was just horrific from us. Absolutely horrific. Um, the players, there were some players, I think, tried hard, just didn't necessarily performed too well. I think Aguirre tried, and I don't think he had a bad game. He just didn't, he just wasn't excellent. I think Sufal gave everything. Don't think he had a bad game, just was not excellent. But there was two players in particular that I thought was just god-awful for us today. The first one being Mavapanos. Um, one goal, One goal. the first goal was his fault. He could have cut that out easily. He didn't need to do what he tried to do. To be fair, I think he's trying to bring it down, but it's just a horrible first touch. It looks like he's playing it into the 18-yarder. Um, but I thought he was really shaky today. I fought, fought for another couple of fooling breaks. He kept diving out and losing it and missing it. It's just He was stinking bad today. I was actually I say relieved. Relieved he went off, not through injury. Hopefully he's okay because I think he's been in good form up until today. But today I thought he was horrific. Now, against Leverkusen and Wolves, I criticised Lucas Paqueta's performance. And I've got a row from a few people. And I do listen. I do pay attention to the comments from subscribers. And if a lot of people think I've been harsh on someone, I think, OK, maybe I have been harsh. But still, my honest opinion, maybe my honest opinion is harsh, that's all. But again, today, it's just, I think he was crap once again, Lucas Paqueta. I think he was awful. The first seven minutes, he looked good. A nice little flick over Wobi's head. But midway through the first half, there was a run from Danny Ings. Paqueta had the ball. There was a run from Ings. It was perfect. He either didn't see it or didn't attempt the pass. One, the two. He sort of lost the ball, and it fumbled its way back to him pretty quickly. Then there was a really easy pass out to Mikel Antonio, and he didn't. Again, either didn't see it or didn't attempt it. He tried to then give it to Danny Ings, even though that opportunity was gone. He just, he was not good today. And he's afforded a bit of luxury at West Ham in our team. We accommodate him. We allow him to lose the ball. We allow him to be a bit lazier than others. And in the end, I'll be honest with you, I thought he should have been sent off for kicking Polina like that because there's no attempt to win the ball. That is just violent conduct as far as I'm concerned. He gets a bit, a bit of a clump for Polina, but he just loses his head like that. It goes and boots him. And on Thursday, some subscribers said to me, you're being harsh on Paqueta. It's because of the tactics from David Moyes. He doesn't like... Well, today wasn't defensive tactics. I'm not having this. Today, we played a low block. We didn't play a low block today. We tried to be more expansive. We're just not very good at it. But when the 11 came out, there was a lot of confusion from when we do the build-up show. You get the initial reaction from West Ham fans in the live chat. And there was a lot of confusion regarding what we're going to be doing with Caduce, Paqueta, Antonio, Danny Ings. There was a case of where we're playing 4 4 2, et cetera, et cetera. What, what are we going to be doing? And I think Ings tried hard today. I'm not this, I, I want to make this clear. I'm not blaming Danny Ings for this next few sentences. But I feel like the system changed to accommodate a second striker, which was Danny Ings. But we just had no idea how to do it. Antonio was playing left wing for most of the time. And he was doing it well. I thought he was giving Castagna a real run around. But the problem was we were sacrificing Antonio to accommodate Danny Ings. And it just wasn't worth it. Danny Ings would have had to almost be man and match to justify what we did today. And he wasn't. He had a couple of half chances and a couple of wild efforts and he tried hard no doubts no questions over Danny Ings's work ethic today but it wasn't working 
and he remained on the pitch for the duration of the game, even though it was not working. There was we changed the centre midfielder, we changed the right back and centre midfielder, as if that was going to suddenly mean Danny Ings and Michael Antonio was going to start playing up front together. Now this goes back to the whole thing, which is well, he's not had any football. There's absolutely no chemistry between him and Michael Antonio. You feel like there's no understanding between them of how to play together. It was incredibly infuriating to watch today because he had to come up with something because of the absence of Jared Bowen. What he came up with was something that we've probably seen for the first time. I can't recall Antonio and Ings playing together at all, really. Um, but when they when they did today, it, it was just nothing. There was nothing between them. And we kept it for 90 minutes as if it was going to suddenly work because we changed Ben Johnson at right back. It's just not good enough. It's not good enough from anyone involved today. Today's a huge, huge missed opportunity. And it does right now. And like I said, I may be overreacting. I'll do my video tomorrow at 9 a.m. If anyone's around at 9 a.m. tomorrow, I'll be, I'll be calmer, be interacting with the live chat. You're welcome to join me. But right now, it feels like season's over. And it's just incredibly deflating because we could have had a good season by finishing in a spot for European football. And we might still do it. But there's a big, it's a first of all, it's a big if, and second of all, it now relies on other teams dropping points, Everton doing something against Chelsea, and us probably doing something against Liverpool and Manchester City. And Crystal Palace have suddenly started banging in goals and winning games at Anfield, something we can't do. So it's hard to feel enthusiastic right now. The only thing keeping me calm, the only thing that's stopping me from being mad right now is what I witnessed with George Earthy. Because up until that, I was furious. I was pleased to see George Earthy come on, but I was angry with what I'd seen today. And then when I seen with that incident with George Earthy, it, 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 it chilled me. I, I watched it and it just it just reminds you that, let's say, football is just a game. It's more than just a game, but it, it puts things into... Pers- I almost felt a bit silly being really angry with the performance and the score when you see George Earthy have a serious incident like that. It's nobody's fault. It's just an accident in football. But it sort of calmed, numbed me like that, if you like. It just chilled me out a little bit seeing the way that he reacted when he hit the deck. It wasn't a, it wasn't a pleasant thing to witness. And obviously, best wishes with George Earthy, and hopefully it's nothing serious. But it did kill me completely um, watching that. So it sort of tempered me a bit. But just... Really disappointing today. Really disappointing. Absolutely pathetic from everybody involved. But like I said, there was two players I thought had a good game. Antonio and Fabianski. And I'm sure I'm going to get a row from people about Paqueta again. But him and Mavropanos today I thought were crap. Um, but the difference is I felt like Mavropanos tried. He just wasn't at the races. Paqueta, ugh, just it's just not good enough. Not good enough from anybody involved. Um Anyway, I'm going to shut up and disappear. That's enough for me. I'll read your comments later on. I'll be live tomorrow at 9 a.m. Hopefully, hopefully with Charlie. But I'll be I'll be um, live tomorrow at 9 a.m. for a camera outlook, and we'll take your comments in the live chat as well. But it's just a huge, massive game for West Ham and an absolute massive fuck up by all involved. Quite frankly, if you somehow enjoyed this review, please do drop a like on by clicking thumbs up. Helps out the video. Helps out the channel. Might cheer me up a little bit. And um, subscribe to Hammer's Chat and you've enjoyed this video as well. I'll be live at 9am. Hopefully catch some of you then. See you in a bit.